What's going on, people? It's Ash here from AHR Sports Talk. This episode, I've got with me Corey, Cardiac Corey, and I've also got Mark here from Paysetters. Uh, guys, thank you guys for coming down here today. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, so, to start off with, um, Mark here, he works full-time with Paysetters, doing sports and leisure, and Corey, he uh, runs his own Cardiac Corey company, helping people, you know, get into sort of exercise and get into new routines. So to start off with, guys, uh, start with Corey. Uh, what got you into sports and what got you into your coaching career? Uh, I got into sports, really, because I was quite lazy to find any other job. <laughs> I wasn't, wasn't clever enough to go and work in an office or in a bank or anything, so uh, I started lifeguarding, which I thought was going to be really easy. When you're standing around the pool, that's the easy bit. When you come off after 20 minutes and you have to go and do the cleaning, it suddenly becomes a lot harder. Uh, however, I enjoyed that given a lot of opportunities by people that are employing me. So I went off and did as many courses as I could, met as many people as I could. Started to enjoy the coaching. Went into swimming coaching, loved that. Enjoyed every moment of the cleaning even when we got to that. (laughs) Enjoyed that, found I became good at it. Um, People wanted me to do it outside of the centre as well. So I went off and did some personal training. Then 1996, my dad had bypass surgery. So that was a bit of a shocker. Uh, he wanted to get fit, so he asked if I could help him get fit, but didn't have the right qualifications. So back on the qualification round again, went on a pilot scheme, learned to be a cardiac specialist, and um, yeah, set my company up. Cardiac wow. Corey was born. Oh, wow, congrats, man. That's really <laughs> good, uh, especially because you know it's family thing as well. Yeah. Really close connections, and um, it's kind of handy as well, obviously, with the experience you had in the past with the leisure centres and stuff health and safety and everything like that really came in yeah you know to run in your own uh, business essentially as well uh mark as well so um you know you're with paysetters full time at the minute yeah. you're 18 on you yeah i'm 18 at the moment yeah yeah um so what got you started with that then because obviously you know a lot of 18 year olds look at this they're college starting university you know what i mean whereas you've gone straight into a yeah career. and like i said i i don't want to be faffing around with college university i want to be there full time working, get, earning a living, because you earn, you can <clears> earn experience and earn qualifications through our coaching, um, just working in schools and working with kids and just instead of university going three years there, with my job at the moment, I'm earning different qualifications in different mm. sports throughout and it's, I feel, I feel it's magnificent learning different sports, you're learning different attributes, you're getting different experience with teaching different kids, different, because you'll learn yourself more mm. it, instead of just focusing on one sport because obviously my main sport at the moment is football but I've got qualifications in dodgeball I've got a qualification in gymnastics and it's given that wide range of possibilities because for example I could fall in love with another sport yeah. and, it gives, and I've got that qualification to move on with that sport instead of just focusing on that one and with Paysetters me and another chap has just set up a football club basing it on the company itself because the company itself is fantastic uh, my boss is brilliant and he's allowed us to set up a football club away from it, inviting children who are on our clubs in schools to come and play. And we've got a team set up at the moment, under eights, and we've got our development plan and our what where we see ourselves is massive. And we continue want to continue to grow and grow and grow, and we want to give the kids the best opportunity in the best possible environment. That's brilliant, man. As well, mate. That's really good, um, mate. How did it all begin then with you? Because obviously, you know, 18 years old, you know, I didn't, like, when I was 18, as Corey would probably know, I was just a little jack the lad just running around, <laughs> kicking balls around and just, you know, two foot and peel for fun. Whereas, obviously, you've sort of got a, a pretty level head with what you want to do, which is great. Yeah, definitely. Um, I started when I was about 15. I got a call from my younger cousin, plays there, he used to play in a team called Molten Magpies. Yeah. And I got a call from one of the chaps, because there's two age groups, two age groups and one was without a manager and I just said I'll, I'll, I'll step in till the end of the season till you find someone else and and since then it's a few games on a few months on I just thought I want to I want to try and pursue this the career I want to take this I want to take this club on so mm-hmm. I did but I also want to get my badges done I want to get some level ones done I want to go on some CPD events I was full for it and I started to fall out the love of playing as well even though I still do now but I, my main focus is on coaching and since mm. then I've been at Rushland Diamonds, I've been at Northampton Town, which I still am now. Yeah. I'm coaching a team, an under-15s team, 
coaching an under 13s team and coaching an under 8s team with pay setters and I just feel like at the moment coaching for me is I feel I would definitely recommend especially the type of Mm. type of industry I'm in with now with pay setters they've given me so much opportunity starting off as an apprentice now I'm there full time more responsibilities the experience I've got is magnificent and I would suggest totally recommend doing going as an apprenticeship in this type of industry instead of going mm. to university and you let you'll learn more from in the outside world mm. in working and full time instead of I know universities are good but I definitely recommend what I do at the moment. Definitely, yeah. It's a great pathway. Hundred percent. If you want to be a coach, yeah, going forward. Hundred percent. I mean, you know, I, I went to university myself, and yeah. you know, a lot of people that studied at university, they mainly went to the more sports science route. Yeah. If that made sense, so more physiotherapy, working in clinics, working, <coughs> you know, in that side of things, working as, um, you know, the club physio, really. Um, whereas when it comes to coaching, it's all about literally. It's not about what you know. It is who you know, and it is all about sort of who you've taught, who you've what type of characters you've you know come across in the past um i'm i'm sure you you probably agree it's like the kids make you enjoy it more do you know what i mean the kids yeah. like when you feed off their energy when you when you see them develop as a as an individual you know and um and the fact that like how they take on your messages and stuff just to explain some of the uh upcoming coaches out there you know how important is feedback for young kids especially at the ages of like 6 7 years of age how important is giving like regular feedback for them it's probably the most important yeah yeah because everything else will grow their skills will grow they'll grow their brains will grow uh, they're sponges at that age so they're taking every piece of information in mm -hmm. they're finding their way in the world they're piecing the world together uh, one of the difficulties that that can occur um, doesn't occur at the clubs that I coach at fortunately but I've seen it where Parents are shouting one thing from, from one side of the, the pitch and then the coaches are shouting something from the other and the poor child in the middle is going, who do I believe? Because if I don't believe dad, dad's going to have a go when I get home and if I don't listen to coach, coach will drop me next week. Yeah. And it's like, oh, where do I go? It's, it's difficult for them. They don't, they don't know where they're going to be. They can't make that decision. As adults, we don't make that. We've yeah. been on coaching courses yeah. uh, together and when... The, the FA coaches are, are saying something to us, we can go out and be a little bit confused and it'd be like, did he mean we've got to stand in between these cones? Or, uh, we, yeah. And we're adults and we understand where we are in the world, where we fit in. Yeah. But for children, it's, it's so difficult. Yeah. You know, they're trying to find out. It's a balancing act. Children often want to please. Yeah, So if a coach true. will give them an instruction, they'll want to go away and practice it and come back and go, coach, look. Yeah. I've seen coaches before. So if somebody's trying to trap a ball or something and the, the, the player goes home and practices it with their dad or against the wall, they're trapping yeah. it. First thing they want to do when they come to the next coaching session, Sorry, coach. coach, look, look what I can do now. I couldn't do it last week. How about that? No, I agree. And, and yeah. the coaches aren't yeah. even interested. They're, yeah. they're throwing the cones on the floor. And it's difficult to mm. understand that because it's all about trying to get your session on. But sometimes just letting them have five minutes of your time. Yeah it'll happen for you guys but you know I'm a dad so I appreciate that when I get in from work no matter how bad the day's been if my kids want to hug or something or want to tell me about their day mm. I try and make that time doesn't always work uh, but I try and make that time for them and that's key it's the same in coaching yeah 100%. how is it like for, for us as coaches oh. if we get feedback from, from the players yeah. and they come up to you at the end of the session they go that was a great session Mark where'd you get that idea yeah, from you're you like <laughs> it spurs you on to do it better doesn't it and it spurs you on to wanting to keep doing it because if you have a good you have a really good session you have good feedback from um especially players as well it shows that you're doing the right thing and you want to get better and mm. it's it's all about how how you approach yourself to the parents if you approach yourself confidently and you let them know the boundaries it's that's that's when they'll know that you're the coach and they're not but if you if you can see that they're going to that you're easy to walk over that's when they'll start they'll take that on it's just how it's the consistency the kids for me, the kids need consistency. They need, mm. they need someone who's going to be wanting to teach them, not about winning, but about how the game is and how to develop in the game instead mm. of f focusing on winning, winning, winning. If you focus on winning all the time, that's when their competitive edge starts coming in, especially from an early age. You want to get them competitive, but you want to also make them enjoy it more. Mm. And you want them to enjoy it along with winning. Winning will come. They'll enjoy it more if they're winning, but also... They enjoy it more if they've got a coach there who will 
properly be able to nurture them and develop yeah. them properly instead of developing them, just picking up the best players. If you develop someone who is maybe not necessarily the greatest player, but then you can see them getting better, that's an achievement. Mm. You look at coaches achieve more when they develop someone who are not yeah. up there straight away. That's, that's, that's coaching for me. That's great. And um, also there's so much preparation that's involved in this. I mean, for example, not just with the football coaching, but obviously with what you do, Corey, you know, with the cardiac um, exercises and everything, how much prep goes into that? And, you know, when you were starting the cardiac, Corey, um, start off as necessarily like a project, you'd say, probably alongside yeah, yeah. your leisure work, you know. Um, I don't know, what, what, what made you want to start that? Um, you know, what, where did you see yourself going with it, if you know what I mean? Because yeah. obviously at that time, you were working, like you said, you were working in leisure. You sort of, I wouldn't say had your career sorted, but you know what I mean? You were doing what yeah, you loved doing. Yeah, yeah you, you were doing what you loved doing and you know what I mean? Yeah, it, part of it was to, to give back because obviously my dad probably wouldn't have been around if he hadn't have gone through rehab and, and got himself back in into line and made a few lifestyle adjustments. Then I could see an opportunity opening. Uh, there, was, there was no position at the hospital where I'm linked in Bedford. So that fell into my lap. So once I got the qualification, and it's about positivity, positive mindsets. I play a lot with the, with the players that, that I've got about positivity mm. because I think that's as key as their particular skills. So if they can believe they do well, oh, definitely. they actually go out and do do well. Mm. Um, we're not having a great season, my under 13s. Results aren't the biggest thing, as, as Mark's just said. What I say to them is part of my role as a coach is to encourage them and see whether we can get them to fall in love with football. Mm. The one thing we have in common is football. Yeah, yeah we support different teams, but it gives us an opportunity to chat with each other, yeah. uh, to have opinions about the game, and everybody's brilliant. Before I started coaching, I thought I knew a lot about football. Then I started to coach and realised I know very little about football, <laughs> um, but I always had an opinion. The planning, preparation, I say to the boys, in order for me to put on an hour session, I need to probably put in about three hours worth of, of work for every hour that I do. That's partly written, partly mm. thought, <clears throat> process, and then I'll always go through. Maybe not into the same speed that they do, but I'll walk through the session that I put on. Mm. So I can understand how it feels for me. Uh, and I do that with my, my personal training clients and, and everyone that's associated with the Kodak Corey. Because I don't feel it's fair if you're asking somebody to do something physical, yeah. whatever it might be, uh, and we'll get on to the technical, the uh, tactical, <laughs> social, and uh, all of those sort of things, the psychological. But if you don't put yourself in that situation, it's difficult mm. to ask other people to do that. Because you don't know what it feels like. Yeah. You know, the kids that are, that are in the teams that I coach, they love to race me. <laughs> I'm older than 18 I'm 49 at the moment but they don't beat me that's where the competitiveness comes in uh, that's um, the type of competitiveness you want though, yeah. that's the enjoyment they, they want to beat yeah. it because it's fun yeah. and they yeah. feed off your energy that's yeah. the most important thing because when you're coaching I think the most important thing in a coach like whenever I watch coaching sessions out there if I see a coach who's running around with the kids and enjoying himself with them I wouldn't know what level he's got, whether he's level one or you A for A. You can never tell. You just no. think, you know what, the passion's there immediately. I wouldn't care what level he is. No. Like, you'd have him with that squad, with that, you know, you'd have him with any group, and they just feed off their energy. And I think that is something that, you know, I mean, you guys coach full-time, so you're doing it all day. And having to maintain that same level, same buzz, <laughs> you know what I mean, with a different yeah, group yeah, of okay. kids must be... It's an act. Yeah. Part of it's an act. Yeah. People, people don't believe that it is an act, but when you stand in front of people, I'm naturally shy. Yeah. I'm an oh, introverted extrovert. So if you give me a big crowd, I can probably G it up, but I'm equally as happy in a social environment, just sitting at the edge and just watching everything unfold in front of me. Uh, it depends on the head that I'm wearing. Yeah. Uh, and with work and with coaching, it's different. I don't need to be paid for it necessarily, because yeah. coaching, obviously we're all doing that. Um, apart from when you're, you're working at pace setters, you're doing it for free. But when you're at the clubs, you're doing that because you have a passion for the game. Enjoy yeah. You want to pass on your knowledge. You want to see other people develop. It's And, and in that process, you're developing as well. Mm. So you don't sit still. We go on coaching courses still, and I'm sure we will, um, bump into each other. You have a chat about things, and then you can hit each other on social media you mm. know, and say, oh, what do you reckon to this? Have you seen this? 
Ash has got a couple of good video clips. I'm sure he'll <laughs> drop those in the, uh, in the show notes. And you can see what's going on there. I'm not going to say much more. <laughs> what he meant by that, by the way, and unintentionally, is that on the level two course, right, Basically, I was wearing this GoPro and uh, we were doing our practical session. This guy has the cheats and nutmeg me on camera. It's just crazy. just gets past me both. Oh, <laughs> it's ridiculous, mate. I'm thinking, oh my I can't gosh. Wait to see it. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be in this video. Don't worry. It'll be somewhere fading across on the, you know, in between the clips. Big so. screen in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big screen. Don't worry. We'll take over. <laughs> when we did our course, though, the level two especially, I mean, there was so much info on that course, mm. you know, it was split into three blocks. Um, and not to give too much away, because some of you guys will be attending and everything, you know. But, and it spoke about how we implement our philosophy to our current teams and how us as coaches can sort of adopt to the English DNA a little bit. So sort of saying like, for example, if my philosophy is playing one way of football or coaching in one, one way, how can I adopt it so that the English DNA can approve of it as well? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, what I noticed on the course is that you have so many different people, which is great. You have people that do things practically, you know, that you know, love to sort of show people how to coach and it's what comes out of their mouth that captures uh, your player's attention. And then you have some that are sort of book smart, if you know what I'm saying. They know every rule in the book, they know every corner. <laughs> They know pretty much all the notes. They come prepared with their notepads and everything. Then you're you talking are... about me, huh? You're talking about no, me. no, 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 no. <laughs> talking about himself, isn't he? <laughs> That's it, mate. What do you make of sort of that sort of coaching as well? So you got to have a bit of both, I suppose. You know what I mean? You got to sort of know the rules and regulations, know pretty much everything that's in the book, everything that's in your course manuals and stuff. But some of the best coaches, I feel like, are the ones that think outside that and sort of say, sort of, you know, adopt their personality into their coaching. I feel like that's where the social corner is so important, where you know you can see their personality in their coaching, mm. and it improves you as an individual as well as as yeah. a coach. Because if we weren't coaching, I don't think I'd have developed half the social skills I've got. Do you know what I mean? That I take forward and speak to parents or speak to my mates, or do you know what I mean? Or even like meeting you guys. You know, no so. confidence grows through it, doesn't it? Um, yeah, coaching kids is the start of it. If you're a shy, relatively shy person like I am, to be fair. I, to be fair, I wouldn't go out there and just be like, oh, hello, my name's Mark. I'd, I would, I'm quite more, I, st I step back. I'm like, I let other people do the talking. I let other people just do it. I'm not the person who comes in with like an opinion or this, that and the other. I step back, but coaching's definitely helped, especially being on the courses as well. The social side has definitely come out. Speaking to other coaches, getting to know them and get confidence grows for it, especially leading sessions in front of men. Nerve wracking, isn't it? But yeah. as soon as you start doing it, the confidence brings out and your confidence gets more and more, especially when you're coaching in front of kids. Mm. If you're getting feedback off proper coaches and you're, t you're, you're doing your session in, on them and they're giving you feedback, you know what, you know how to develop with your kids and the confidence will come out, the social side has come out and getting a relationship with the parents is massive and that just, help, that just helps brings a good, good social side to yeah. coaching, most definitely. Definitely, 100%. Um, Corey, how do you feel as well about the whole, um, you know, social aspect? Like, how important do you think that is within your coaching? Like, especially considering, you know, because when you go on the courses, I'm sure you see that as a business opportunity as well as coaching as well to, you know, meet with a potential client or a potential uh, partner or something. You, yeah. Do you know what I mean? You, you look at it as a potential opportunity for that as yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, every day is an opportunity, isn't it? You never know who you're going to meet, what, what's going to be said, how it goes. You can, you can have a loose plan for what you think you're going to be doing. It's the same mm. as when you're coaching your football. You, you can have your session plan worked out right through, through the minutes, and some people <clears> do do that. Then when you get there, all of a sudden, within two minutes, one of the players has gone down, he's twisted his ankle, or a cone has, has blown across and put somebody off, and a keeper's dived, and he's hit the <laughs> post rather than catching the ball. And, and then your session's thrown into turmoil, and I think... Like Mark says, when that, that confidence grows that you can manage any situation mm. uh, because you're responsible. Yeah. You know, th those children are often left by their parents for you to look after mm. um, and to impart some wisdom, if you can do, over the course of the, the time that mm. you're with them. And that's a, that's a difficult challenge. But every time you meet somebody, it's, it is being social. 
It mm. is saying to them, "Hi, who you know? Who are you?" Yeah. It's making the first move sometimes because that's that's difficult. Whenever you go at any social situations, the coaching courses, we're all sat around. We're probably there maybe with somebody that we know from our clubs or we've met previously, and we'll sit there. So when we were doing the level two, we'd met on the some other courses so you can sit yeah. there and then it's like oh and then 20 minutes after we should have started ash come through the door hello ash you're <laughs> it's like yeah <laughs> unfortunately tonight that was me but um yeah so you, yeah you've been very polite you haven't given me any stick for no, that, no 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 yeah. no mate yeah. not yet anyway <laughs> not yet <laughs> I, I always respect more people i'm just saying <laughs> but the social aspect is amazing for for coaches as well because every opportunity is different in order to be successful you look for open doors yeah. So for start, when you're at pace setters, you can go and approach your, your, your boss and say, any chance we could coach an under eight team here during that time? And they're like, yeah, excellent. Yeah, then they can see value for money for paying for you to go on the courses and do some coaching. And it's like, actually, every single coaching course you go on, so it's, whether it's dodgeball, gymnastics, you're going to learn something different. Mm. And you have to change the way that you coach to individuals. So you could explain it, you know, a simple, you know, no look pass. You can say, right, I'm going to pass the ball over to you, Ash, but I'm going to look over there. So as we do that, little pass. And you, but you've got to be ready and you've got to know. So if you don't know that I'm going to pass that, you can waste valuable time. If I can't kick the ball that far, which I can't, but if I can't, then there's going to be a problem with, with the coaching. So if I can't <clears throat> find a way to communicate that to you, that the ball's going to be coming to you and the yep. pace, if I don't get it all the way across because I haven't put the right weight of pass behind it, that creates a difficulty on a, a match day. Yeah. And f for the children, there's much more pressure on a match day. There mm. shouldn't be because it's exactly the same as training. However, the their perception, the yeah, yeah. they've got, got their parents watching. They've got other teams' parents watching. There might yeah. be other coaches. And then there'll be a whisper. Another team playing scout. behind them. Yeah. Another team playing, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The weather conditions have changed. You know, oh, we're playing on grass. I've only got my moulded studs. Uh, All yeah. of those things. It's <laughs> like, oh, what am I doing this afternoon? Am I going to have a chance to play on the PlayStation? <laughs> it's all those sort of things. It is. And I think sometimes mm. as coaches, I'm not results-based, as you can tell if you have a look at the league where my teams are. But um, it, it's all about us as coaches. And we come off and we're like, how could we improve that? How could we do that? The mm. kids are like... It's never ending, stop thinking, especially as, volu is. as a volunteer. As a volunteer as well. As a volunteer, you're thinking, you, you, you think it's a paid job with how much you do, how much planning you do, how much time. It's on my mind 24-7. Yeah. Coaching, my teams I coach, the three teams, it's on my mind 24-7. Even though I don't get paid for it, it's on my mind thinking, mm. how can I get better? What can I do to get better? How, oh, we've, we've drew this game, but how, well, why did we draw this game? He's made he's made a bad pass. It's like how can I put this into training? How can I do this? It's always it's on your mind twenty four seven. It's the coach. It's grassroots coaching. A lot of coaches don't get a lot of credit yeah. for it. it. Does take over your life a lot of time, and it yeah. depends how you manage it. It's how you manage it, isn't it? And it's, I suppose it's the support you got around you as well. Exactly. Like with the club, with the parents, with the. You've got to have you know, some right. some. Um, I mean, you know, you've probably been some away games where you think, Jesus, look at that club, like. Look at the support he's got. You know, look at the parents he's got. You know, look at the help he's getting, all that stuff. You know what I mean? That is a whole new thing to build. Mm. To build that relationship with parents to say, oh, can you come at half eight in the morning put the nets up, and put the nets up? And put the nets up. Do you know what I mean? Respect barrier. Yeah, respect barrier. You, you get the same two every week. You do yeah, it. you get the same, same committed two. <laughs> yeah. That's the same. The same, any, the same any Phil and Brad. That's yeah. it. Phil and Brad every week. <laughs> Phil and Brad every week. <laughs> Run the line, you do the nets. On a real though. Week. With coaching nowadays, I feel like it's become a reputation as well at, at points because, I mean, you know, as much as I love social media, it's made a massive influence on us. For example, Mark, you know, it's the first time I'm meeting Mark today face to face personally, but I've probably been speaking to you on social media social. for about 18 months now. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> and I know you as a coach, I know where you coach and everything because of your weekly updates and you know about me, do you yeah, know, through that. that. Um, for example, Corey, you know, like obviously I met you on the level two course since then. We've been, you know, hitting yeah, up a show media. on social media. Not bad for an old fella. Exactly, <laughs> that's it. Do you know what I'm saying though? And it does make a massive influence on that. And also, in regards to reputation, like, you've got to maintain that as well alongside it. You know, luckily for myself and Mark, we coach younger kids, so results ain't really massive for us. Well, but by the time we hit, like, let's say, for example, we're coaching under 17s, under 18s, where the results are like, the main thing. The main thing, the results are the one thing that you're sort of driven towards. 
it does become more of a reputation thing to sort of, re- um, how can I say it, reflect on yourself in a way. That's a only a psychological issue there, isn't it? Which huh? leads us nicely into the, the yeah. four corner mode. It does, four mate. Corner. Right. So we've set up a little tactics board. Um, so basically it's got some small tasks, small match day tasks. First of all, how important is this thing on a match day? Like without it, you're pretty much screwed. You need it. The players need it. The players need visual. You can't, they're not always going to take in the information you bring in. They need the visual aid in it. They need to know, know what their role is. Because kids are, <clears throat> kids, you think, you think, oh yeah, they'll be like, yeah, they nod. They nod, they know their role. Then they go out there and on a match day and they don't do it. But no, I'm being honest though, but something with tactics boards are the best inventions a coach could ever have on it. Yeah. Ever, ever. In a match day on a training. Because kids will look at it and be like, they'll, they'll look at the movement and they'll be like, that's what I should be doing on the pitch. Mm. If, you're, if you're just <clears throat> saying it, they're, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. They won't do it. Yeah, I just want to go play. Come on. Yeah, just <laughs> get me on, on the pitch. But with a tactics board, they're glued to it. They'll be like, ooh. They, they, it's fun because they get to see that that's, they're thinking it's them moving on the pitch and it's like, that's the movement I want. That's how I need to be in a position like defending. This is how I need to be attacking. <laughs> It's, it, it, they're the best inventions. Yeah, I mean, sometimes what I do with my players, like how I used to do it, I used to put professional players' names on it and say, right, so this week you're um, De Gea, you know, you're Didier Drogba, whatever. I put, like, you know, all players on there. And That's then great. one week they think, oh, yeah, I'm going to be like him. How does he play? Got well, to watch a few YouTube videos now. Watch him back, try and replicate the next match day. Oh, different. You know what I mean? That's and that's good, good if, a, if a player struggles with, with using both feet. Yeah. Because you can say, oh, I'd like you to be like Kevin De Bruyne next yeah. week. And they go away, they have yeah. a little look and they think, oh, he's right footed, but I'm left footed. Oh, does he want me to use my right foot? And it actually gets them thinking when they're not training or on a match day. Mm. And they like say, the kids love YouTube. Yeah. My son watches YouTube videos. The F2 it, it, and everything, big oh, influence. All sorts Massive of stuff, influence, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's a lot different from when I grew up, you know, kicking a a sponge football against the, the back, <laughs> back fence and stuff like that. So much more available to, to mm. the players. And, and I think if we can use that as coaches, using the social media, taking your iPads in and saying, look, can we get movement like this? You see how he's hit the ball there? What part mm. of the foot did he hit it with? Then they're actually picking up those, those cues called proprioception as well. So yeah. the space that they're filling when they're moving, so they can understand that, because it is a difficult thing, because as they grow... Ligaments, tendons, muscles, joints, bones don't all grow in the same speed. Yeah. So we've got some, some lads under 13s and there's a, there's a couple of lads that are as tall as me, six foot. And, and you, you're thinking, hang on a minute, they were running brilliantly last year. They have a little bit of a struggle to run and then they're back on it again now. Mm. So it's just where they're having those little growth spurts. And you probably remember that. Well, you haven't grown yet, but you probably remember when you were younger as you grow a little bit taller. It's ripping your yeah, 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 you love that. Get a, bit, get a little bit taller. I, I used to run as well, uh, as well as play football. So at one point, uh, I was a sprinter and I, I just couldn't get my gait together. It was, it was difficult. I didn't understand why. And then my coach took me to one side and he said, you're, you're 15 years old. You know, your, your bones, your joints, your ligaments, your tendons, mm. your muscles, they're all growing at different rates. Mm. I had problems with my knees at that, that age. And, and back then you didn't have like technology to look at it or oh, anything no. like that, whereas no. nowadays I'm sure a 15-year-old would know. Oh, well, if you, <laughs> if you say to a 15-year-old, oh, they've had an ACL injury, yeah. they'd know exactly They'll what know you're straight away. If you would have said to me ACL, I would have gone ICI. <laughs> well, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> NHS? I don't know. What is it? It's just the initials, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know, whereas now the social media, YouTube, brilliant for finding out things, isn't it? It is. You can, you can go and just look at, at player mistakes. Uh, I love player mistakes, especially yeah. in the younger ages, because if they make a mistake, you just say to them, what happened there? I said, I made a mistake. And no, it was a, a mistake. So we'll do that again. It's, <laughs> that, that's what it's about. It's about redefining the language, isn't it? I like that, especially with... Um, for example, you know, it's not just a tactics folder we got here. It's sort of like little messages as well. So um, I like how, you know, always always three options. You know what I mean? Just little, little buzzwords that sort of stick to it. Do you know what I mean? Because mm. I think one thing that coaches get wrong quite often is they overload them with so much info and you're forgetting. Short, especially you've got to be short and snappy. Because at the end of the day, when we were on our badges, do you remember the amount of times Andy would stop the session and it would be like, right, what did he just do there? Right, so that transition, we're adults here, so we need this sort of feedback. This is us learning, and there's me just thinking, oh, let's get on with it. Let's get on with the game, I was throwing goal, what are you doing? You know what I mean? So, um, it's finding that balance as well of 
because you got it all in your head. You've got so much you could be telling him about his right foot, but you've got to be sort of keeping it to two, three words, if that. But the most important one is this one on top corner here, which is, says what, Mark? Enjoy the game. Enjoy the game. That's the end products that we want. We want kids to be staying in the game because how many of them leave the game? You know, oh, lots. Yeah. yeah, I've had a couple of players this year that have uh, Not just players, struggled. but people involved oh, yeah. in football. Yeah, yeah. yeah. coaches as well. Sport, yeah. Um, you know, when, when you're, you're having a tough season and you're, you're being beaten every week, it's not pleasant for anyone, is it? We know yeah. that as football fans. Yeah. You go out and your club's being beaten every week. You don't oh, want to go back the next week and watch them, do you? So it's, it's take United, United for playing. example, this yeah, team. Well, take West Ham for you as well, a, man. It's a just round of there at the minute. I'll say. <laughs> yep. luckily, and you beat us, to be fair. <laughs> luckily, MK Dons season tickets, they're doing all right in League Two. Dead. That's ground in League Two as well. No. <laughs> Franchise FC. <laughs> and he didn't deserve to beat us as well, man. Goal was clearly offside. It was, right. it was it offside, was... and we should have bagged. A yeah, we should have bagged. We, a we missed a couple then. of sets. We know. did, <laughs> mate. I was sitting right behind the goal as well. Yeah, he's off so the. Was he's shaking my hand, mate, and I'm thinking, you're, you know what I mean. So he's off the pitch clearly, man. That's just mad. But seriously, though, on a real, coaches leaving the game because the majority of us coaches, you know, I mean, myself for example, I'm not doing this full time. Do you know what I'm saying? I work in my day job do this, you know, because I love it in the evenings, weekends, you know, doing the filming, stuff like that, just because, you know, like any 22 year old, you want to do as many things as you want. But on a real, I left the game uh, for at least eight months. Um, I was part of a grassroots club. I enjoyed it so much. I put, I went, you know, I felt like I was, I went above and beyond for those, you know, for those kids, you know, at, at some points. And I really liked the group I had. The issue is, was me, like, as in it was genuinely myself, like, you know, my communication skills with the parents weren't the best, like, looking back, you know what I mean? At the time, I thought I was okay, but looking back, you know, you think, I could have done that, I could have, you know what I mean? You always have that thought. Like, the kids were feeding off my energy, which was great, and they were playing some nice football and stuff like that, but there were some points where I'd condition it to a level where you're thinking, come on, Ash, just let them play. Do you know what I mean? Because that's something that we're taught, like, you know, condition the games, make it challenging, get them in their ugly zones we talk mm. about. But there's, there's a limit, there's a fine line, and I just felt like I crossed it on so many different occasions where I thought, the same for me. Do you know what I mean? You always have that thought, the same for me. And I, I don't know what it is that gets you back in it. And Enjoyment of the game. It is, you know, and that is the I'll one thing. My that, that was my I'll put all their messages on, just saying. It's true. Like, honestly, though, <laughs> that is the one thing that gets you back no, in it. it is, definitely. You know? I mean, the majority of us coaches are part-time, you know, or do it for free alongside the day jobs. And obviously the majority of grassroots coaches are parent helpers, you know, that do it for their, for their son or for their daughter and they get involved for the sake of them. And it is tough. It is challenging. Um, but what do you think? Like you guys spoke about, about how, you know, courses and stuff like that are great for making it roots and coaches. Obviously, you two have took two completely separate routes. What would your advice be for, you know, the younger, like, younger generation sort of making their way up and sort of understanding what it takes to at least have the same passion for the game to go on for 20 odd years as a coach, even if they're not full time, to at least maintain that passion and sort of stay in the game for as long as they can so that they can provide better lives for you know, their kids and everything, do you know what I mean? What, as a coach or as a, just in the sporting industry? As a coach, mainly. So uh, ones that are sort of starting off as a coach and, you know, you want them to stay in the game for as long as they can because it's, you know, the FA is built around involvement. Be comfortable in your own environment. Yeah. Don't, like you said, you touched on it earlier, you chatted, um, you went above and beyond sometimes, you went maybe pushed the limit a little bit and you thought, this ain't for me. Don't challenge yourself too much so you don't enjoy it yourself. You, the main thing is, yeah, you want to get the enjoyment of the players, you want to get the enjoyment of this, that and the other. You've got to enjoy it. Mm. You cannot look at it and just be, stick at it if you're not going to enjoy it because it, it's not going to be good for the children. It's not going to be good for yourself. If you don't enjoy it, try and look at a way of why you don't enjoy it. Don't just give it up. Look at why you don't enjoy it and see if you can improve it that way. I'd say, personally, I've had, I've had times where I've wanted to give up difficult times but you've got a responsibility with the children and you're thinking they, they look up to you as a role model they that, that's that's the thing what spurs me on they look at me they look up to me and think you see the football they play on a match day they're thinking that that's that's you, you that, that we're playing the way my coach wants to look that's the way you're getting your own views you're getting your own philosophy out there and for me i'd say find a route try and find a route in it try and get yourself out there get your name out there message 
academies, message semi-pro clubs, message these message, message development centres and just challenge yourself even more. Try and get yourself out there. Getting yourself out there is probably the most important bit of it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Adver- you're constantly, I can imagine, doing loads of advertising, leaflets, uh, you know, you got your kit on and everything, do you know what I'm saying? Like you got the um, the merchandise and all. Yeah. Um, we're branded. Branded. You know. He's got his little pun as well, so squats next. <laughs> Anyways. He's used that one already, haven't he? I know. <laughs> I love it. It's amazing. <laughs> but with that, uh, with your like kit and everything, what does the, because uh, you, you spoke about the meaning behind your name, Corey, you know, like in regards to obviously the cardiac Corey, what does it stand for then, you were saying? Ah, uh, so the conscious mind. <laughs> You've got to know what, what your mind does, how it's doing it, how you learn, how you think, mm. how you filter, all of those sort of things are key. How you learn is, is probably the key f- one for the coaches because you've got to realise that the kids are going to learn in different ways. So some of them are going to learn just by taking the, the information in through their ears, so auditory learners. Others are going to have to, like you said, they're going to have to practice it. They're going to have to go away and, and, and roll the ball. Let's have a ball rolling over. What does that ball feel like? How can I move that? What part of my foot is best to touch it with? All of those sort of things. Mm. Uh, kinesthetic learning. Then you might just have people that are visual, so using the tactics board. So not, we don't all learn in one way. Mm, we're going to pick up a different, yeah, different piece from everything. Mm. So tonight when we're chatting, we're going to pick up different things as we're going along. Sometimes you're going to go off on other people's body language. Yeah. So if we're sat here thinking, oh, come on, Ash, get going, mate. I've had enough of this. I'm getting hungry. Looking at a watch, you're going to start to feed off that. You're going to think, oh, we've got to, got to carry on. But why well, it's just rolling... This is, this is natural, this is comfortable. We're all in a situation yeah. where well, no, this is just rolling. Safety zone, aren't we? We're in a safe environment. We, we're comfortable around each other. We've got different views, so we mm. want to listen to each other. It's, it's magnificent. It's just it's different routes we're setting out as well. It's mm. like you're saying, you've got your own route, I've got my own route, Ash has got his, and it's amazing learning. We, we all want to, we're, we're trying to learn off each other, and it's getting different views, getting our own views out there, helping mm. each other, and also helping everyone else know what we want to do, know, know the paths people can go down. It's amazing. It is, uh, especially considering like the game works all together as well. You know yeah. what I mean? Football, Football, like everything we have in common just come, you know, helps come together. Even though we're all doing our own different routes, uh, you'd never think that that's how powerful the game is, you know? Because, I mean, you talk about, for example, like businessmen all going in their different ways and everything like that, you know? They're never connected through business. Do you know what I'm saying? One thing brings them back, like football. Yeah, it's amazing. one thing just Game. brings us all together, you know, whether you're part-time, you're full-time, whether you're self-employed, you're employed with a company, you know, it's all there. So we've all come together through uh, different routes, you know what I mean? Employed, self-employed, volunteers, everything like that. The main aim of this video is what routes can you go down if you want to make it in this game full-time? And also how to reconnect with people like we have just done today, different ways to connect. So just on that note, where it all started. So, you know, Corey, you brought your Chester Romans kit with you today. Yeah, my boys. Mark, you've got your, uh, you're representing, obviously you're representing pace setters as he's wearing yeah, them, but he's also... Kingsthorpe as well. Got the Kingsorp originals, Jet. Kingsthorpe Jets. So we're going to put that, we're going to whack this here on the rack of fame after the channel. Any guests that come through, please bring your kits and we'll put them all on the rack of fame and we'll give you a massive shout out on our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everything like that. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. I've been AHL Super Soccer Performance and I'm out of here. Peace. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate.